Okay, I'm finally getting around to getting the keyways cut, which is the last operation here. And what I had to do was set this up going out the other way. I normally work on the, on the right side of the mill, but I had to put it out that way because I have no room this other way. It's sticking way out there and it's near the door. And that's one of the disadvantages of having a mill set up this way. If you had the room, it's better to have it, you know, clear on both sides in case you have to do a long shaft. Couldn't do it out this way because uh, right over here there's a set of cabinet drawers which when I set up the new mill I'm going to move those cabinets uh, and put them somewhere else. But anyway what I did, I, I clamped it in a vise here and I just put a jack underneath the screw, just kissed the bottom of that and put a clamp here, not real tight, just to kind of keep that thing from jumping around. Now down the other end all the way down the end there, let me see if you can see it. Yeah, you should be able to see it here in the picture. Is the other handle, and that's going, the keys are on the other side. So what I want to do on this one is put the keys on this side so that the keys will be on this side so that this handle is with the ball out this way and it's going to be close enough and don't have to be perfect. Okay, one other thing, one other thing as uh, my, my apron's coming apart, Jesus. And another thing I needed to do was the table, I don't have enough travel because it's only a 32 inch table and that's the one nice part about going to a 42. So I needed to get out here and I, I was almost to the end of the travel. So with the turret mill, the vertical turret mill, which is the proper name for this machine, the vertical turret mill, the whole dovetail rim here that this is this head is on can swivel back and forth anywhere you want. It could swivel without losing indication. So I loosened up the four bolts, swung the headway over here, and I'm able to work over over on this side. And um, it's not going to lose the indication. Even if it did, I can indicate it again, but I don't have to. So now I'm pretty much ready to cut this keyway, so I'm going to put two small ones, I've got a smaller keyway than the original, which is okay, doesn't matter that much, I'll just put two here to run the gear, which is over here someplace, uh, here, I'll just put two keys, two keys on this, and that'll be, you know, just, let me see what, what we got, I'm going to put two keys, one, one, I'll mark them out, and then one over here for the, right in the middle of this, right here, for the, uh, for the handle. And that's it. Now, all the information for the keys, to get the keys, is in the uh, machinery's handbook, and I'm going to get one. I have it. I don't use it that often, but I have it. And you look up there, the number of the keyway, and that'll tell you how deep how, how deep to go with it if you touch off. And in this box, here, here's the machinist's handbook. This is the Bible. Machinist Bible. You gotta have one. Buy one. Don't put it online. Keep it a book like this so you can look at it. The old days. Forget online. What are you gonna do? Have a computer next to use a book. That's what it's for. Uh, and uh, well, I went off on a tangent. Oh yeah, here, here's the keyway. Here it is. I, I put the, I got all the keyways here, all the keys, and put a box of them there. And what I do is I put this, and I want to bring it up close so you can read it. Yeah, and that is a number three, half inch size by one eighth keyway Woodruff key. And I keep that in here. Now on the back here, all right, what I do is I put on there exactly how deep to put it to make it. So it's 141, 140 thousandths after I touch off, 140 thousandths in will give you the proper depth for that key. Now, Mr. Pete, my dear friend, did a whole video on how to do a Woodruff key. And no sense in me telling you how to do it. He does a much better job, and I'm going to put the name right down here and the um, URL on YouTube 
to find that video. And you follow what he did, and you can do the same thing. In fact, he's even doing it on the same side as I am. So, um, follow the way he did it, and that's how you do it. I'm going to do the keys now, and then I'll be done. Be back when I'm done with the keys and show you how it came out. Got the keyways cut. Three keyways, two for the drive, and one for the handle. And I got to take the burrs off of everything, but the keys will fit in there. Uh, interesting enough, I talked about the uh, VDF, VFD. Everything's got to have initials, right? VDF, B, boop, bop. Jeez, oh man, why can't they just say variable frequency drive? There, over there on the wall. Believe me, if you're thinking about putting one on your mill, I know I'm going to hear some flack about it. Don't do it. I couldn't even cut this thing here without the thing bogging down. I still have to change the belts. It's not helping me whatsoever. The only thing that's good about it, like my friend Dan has one, he has it cranked all the way up and he's running the, the um, thing from the very front of the machine from the variable speed. That just creating three phase. That that's probably okay. But to actually rely on that for speed change and all, it isn't worth it. You can't cut a heavy cut. So do yourself a favor. Just go with the regular converter. I got the converter back there on the floor. You really can't even hear it when it's running. So anyway, that's it for this thing. It's all done. Uh, I got to deburr a little bit, and then I got to put it back together. Just double check it; it'll be okay. And uh, that's it for uh, rebuilding a Bridgeport Part Two. Thanks for watching, and subscribe to my videos. Thank you.